Good morning, guys. Welcome back to the Truth Be Told podcast. If this is your first time joining the Truth Be Told podcast, I am absolutely excited that you are here. We've not met before. My name is Alexis Monet Howe, and I get the privilege to have conversations with you guys each and every episode. And I'm super excited about our conversation today, and I hope it is an encouragement to you. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get into this word. And I really honestly, by the title, you can see that we are literally getting into the word of God. Every episode, we do talk about Jesus and his word um, through everyday living, everyday life, and through the ups and downs of what we may experience and the joyful things. But today specifically is all about one specific thing, which is how to read the Bible. Now, I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm only here to share with you what I do. And from there, hopefully you can find your own rhythm and way of approaching the Lord and approaching the way that you read his word. So I'm going to start out in just sharing two ways that I approach reading the Bible and then we'll get into what I am currently doing and what I'm currently reading and how I currently <laughs> go about reading the Bible. So y'all cool with that? You, you with me? All right. So um, reading the Bible, before we even get into that, I feel like reading the Bible is the most, one of the most important things in our Christian faith, right? The Bible is literally the breath of God. It's so important that we um, incorporate the Bible into our lives and reading it and studying it and knowing it and living it out, right? So we know that the word is the Lord. And if the Lord is telling us like, this is my life for you, this is my way for you, this is my will for you, should we not study it? Should we not read it? Should we not involve ourselves into it? And so I am a um, huge advocate for reading the Bible. And I have, um, as I've grown in my faith, how I read the Bible has changed a lot, pretty, pretty tremendously, but I think I'm in a really great spot. And I hope that the ways that we talk about today do bring you some encouragement and do help you find your own space and rhythm, like I said earlier, for you to read God's word because his word is alive and active and it will expose you as you read it. But he also uses his word, his breath to repair us, to restore us, to rejuvenate us, to give us what we need, want, and desire. It's all found in his word because his word is his presence. And it's just so good. It's so, so good. The Bible is not boring. The Bible is not old. It is alive. It is present. It is active. It is for you. And um, it is something to be enjoyed, right? It is something to be enjoyed. So I'm really excited. I absolutely love the Bible. Um, I honestly don't really like reading or growing up, I didn't like reading a lot. And so I really fell in love with reading the Bible. And now I read Christian books. But before I was like, you couldn't get a book around me. I mean, you could put it there, but I'm not going to read it. And so when I started reading the Bible, I was hooked. And I'm so grateful for it because the Bible is this living bread that we get to be a part of and take part in and eat every single day. And um, yeah, so I really, I'm a huge Bible lover. I absolutely going, love going through the scriptures from Old Testament and New Testament. And I'm all over the place when it comes to the Bible, but I have a little bit of structure sometimes. Speaking of structure, that is one of the two ways that I approach the Bible. And so um, if I am doing more of a structured approach of reading the Bible, I will pick a book of the Bible. For example, um, I love the Gospels of Jesus, um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Specifically, I'm more of a John book of the Bible. I think his creative writing and he summarizes things super well. And um, I had read that the, the gospel of John comes from more of a creative writing standpoint. And I found that interesting because I'm a writer as well. And so I just think that's one of the ways that I relate and click with John. Um, I love Luke in the gospel as well, because he's very detailed. I think I'm a very detailed person in explaining things as y'all have learned in our, (laughs) in our podcast episodes. I'm very detailed in those things. Um, 
But yes, so I'll pick a book of the Bible like John or something in the um, later on in the New Testament as well, like um, um, Romans or if we go Old Testament, I love Exodus um, and currently just really loving the the burning bush uh, encounter and just sitting with that. Anyway, so I'll pick a book of the Bible, basically. Then I'll read verses and it's typically for me, subtitle to subtitle. So I know some people do chapter reading. I think that's too much for me. And so I will go subtitle to subtitle, which is typically 10 to 15 verses. This is when I'm structured, okay? This is structured ways. And um, 10 to 15 verses. And that is enough for me, I feel like. I even feel like it's above what I can handle. So it, it, it pushes me a little bit more. And then when I pick a book of the Bible and when I pick a certain portion of scripture, I typically circle and underline or um, words that stick out to me. So for me, certain words like all or will be or um, currently now to tell or to speak or to hear. These are words that really stick out to me. Go is a really big one. And go is a, the word go is in Exodus 3 a lot. And it, every time it stands out to me. And so I will circle those words or underline them. And they, they literally jump off the page, which means that the Holy Spirit is speaking something through those very words. I love those words. Um, so yeah, that's what I'll do. And then after underlining and circling words that stick out to me, I'll write my thoughts in a notebook. And I'm a journaling crazy person. Like I love to journal. Absolutely. I've got my journal actually here. One of the 50 journals that I have uh, because I love to write so much. And I'll write my thoughts on the verses, even in my Bible. I don't know if you guys can see it. If you're watching on YouTube, hopefully you can see this. But I even write in my Bible. Some people don't do that. I understand. But for me and my relationship with the Lord, we write in the Bible. <laughs> and I will write in there anything that stands out or anything I can put in the side columns of my thoughts. And that's my structured reading. So again, going overview, if you, if I'm saying this, I'm a little bit confusing. I pick a book of the Bible, either in the Old Testament or the New Testament. If it's Old Testament, maybe Exodus maybe Joshua. Um, if it's New Testament, it's more so a gospel. So John, typically Romans. Um, I love those two. And then I read a portion of scripture, typically subtitle to subtitle, 10 to 15 verses. When I pick that portion of scripture, then I will circle or underline anything that stands out to me, certain words. I'll write in the Bible and in my notebook, my thoughts on that portion of scripture. And I have found it to be super um, interesting. And it's like a way that I invest into the scripture rather than just reading it. Like I'm intentional and in seeing the words and um, the words that stand out to me are not big words and they're not new words. They're basic, ordinary, everyday words that stand out to me. And so I, I love that they do. And um, yeah, if, if it's a word like all and I circle it, I will define all as everything. And we know what all means, but for me, it's just taking what I already know and just defining it, just taking it one step further to not just say, oh, I know it, like sitting with it. So that's me structured. Okay. Now we'll talk about the spontaneous part of how I read the Bible. And actually that's where I'm at right now. And I will either randomly open the Bible and whatever I set my eyes on, that's what I'll read. And I find that if I'm not in a specific, you know, book of the Bible, then randomly opening it and setting my eyes on one thing, it's just a way that I'm like, hey, Lord, I need you to show me where, where I need to read or what I need to read. Now, there have been some times that I've read something where it's like this one begot this one and that one begot that one. It doesn't say it just like that because that's like King James Version and I'm an NLT girl. OK, um, but yeah, so that is something that I do is randomly open it. Whatever I first set my eyes on, that's what I'll read. Again, I applied the subtitle to subtitle um, to that. And so I don't read that much. Um 
then there's also where I will go to a verse that I believe like the Holy Spirit is leading me to. So, um, and I'll get into specific examples, but I believe that there are days when I ask the Lord, hey, what do you want me to read? And he will give me a portion of scripture to read. Now, this doesn't always mean that it's like Romans 15 and it's all of 15 or it's verses 1 through 10. Sometimes it's Romans 15 too, you know, and it's just that one verse. And for me, being such a huge Bible reading lover, writing down everything I can, going to one verse seemed like it wasn't enough right? I had to, it was actually a battle for me in reading the Bible. I was like, Lord, I have to read at least like 10 to 15 verses, you know? And it's not about how much you're reading. It matters about what you're reading. Do you understand it? Do you get it? Are you obeying the Lord? And so this has been a change that the Holy Spirit has had to make within me. And just knowing like, if you read 10 verses, great, but that doesn't make you superior to the person that only reads one verse. And so he has humbled me to know that whether I read one, 10 or 50 verses, it does not matter how much, right? It does not matter about the quantity. It's all about the quality. Do I get what, wow, y'all hear that voice crack? Wow. Um, do I get what he is trying to tell me? And so that is something that I do. I also do the same thing that I will do in a more structured setting, circle, underline words that stick out to me. I'll write my thoughts in the notebook or a Bible or both sometimes. Um, but yeah, so that is my structure and that is my spontaneous. And there was a time that I would rewrite the verses that I was reading in my notebook. And for me, it was very helpful. And this is where like, you just have to know what works for you, what doesn't. So at the time past, when I rewrote the verses in my notebook, it was a way that I was even more intentional, like just taking it from the Bible to a blank sheet of paper. And there I will circle and underline and it would stand out a little bit more, right? It was less busy on a blank sheet of paper than it is in the Bible with several different words in it. And so when I would rewrite the verse in the in the notebook, I'd circle, underline, and then I would write my own interpretation on that verse. And I did this verse by verse. So if I did it verse by verse, the 10 to 15 verses kind of went short to like five to seven verses um, because I really wanted to be intentional in understanding what I was reading. Uh, I had always found myself just reading the scriptures and going through it and enjoying what I was reading for the most part. But now I'm learning to actually know what is the Lord saying? I'm not just reading this story. I'm learning the principle. And that's what breaking down the verses look like for me. And and so I do it differently. Pretty much my structure and my spontaneous and the ways that I've done it in the past are the same, but they do have a little different stuff within them. And um, I do remember a time where I had mentioned earlier that uh, I will go to verses that I believe the Holy Spirit is telling me to read. And there was one moment that every single morning, right, that I would, um, the Holy Spirit would say, I want you to read Mark 10, Mark 10. And Mark 10 is not a long chapter and um, from the subtitle to subtitle. And so I would read Mark 10. And the next day I would read Mark 10 around the same time. And I did this for like two weeks. Now, being human and being a person that wanted to go to bed, I was like, I don't understand this. Why am I reading about, you know, Moses uh, said that um, a man can divorce a woman in this setting. And, but you know, what do you say, Jesus? And, and all the, like, why am I reading about divorce? I ain't even dating, you know? And it was just like, I want to go to sleep. I want to go to bed. I don't get it. But what I believe that the Holy Spirit was telling me to do is to number one, obey him. And then number two, embed his truth in me because somebody may need to know some sort of truth that comes from Mark 10. And so I have um, just invested that already into myself. So now he can pull it out whenever he needs to. So I, I love that time and looking back on it, I'm like, okay, could have been a little bit more patient, could have been a little bit more understanding, but I did do it. And I praise God for that and his strength to allow me to do it. There's another time, um, actually not too long ago, where I would just read Exodus 3. And Exodus 3 is a little bit more of a lengthy 
uh, chapter. And so I would not read all of Exodus 3. It was typically uh, a few verses, right? So it'd be like Exodus 3, 1 through 3 really stood out to me. And then it would be 10 and 12 and 16 maybe even 15 sometimes, but it was like those verses stood out. And so basically what I'm trying to say is listen to the Holy Spirit. And if words are sticking out to you, sit with it, define it, break it down. If there are verses that you don't understand, break that down. The, these are verses that you've heard in the pulpit and from your parents, from your grandparents, um, still break them down because there is something in them that is beautiful and we don't want to miss it just trying to read a verse or trying to read several verses to get that checked off our list or to make sure we're doing the Christian thing, you know? Um, so yeah, and then um, these are just verses. And I guess too, this is something for you guys to check out. Mark 10, Exodus 3, Romans 10 and 11. I Literally, I read Romans 10 and 11 so much that I have a sticky note. I don't know if you guys can see it on YouTube. I wrote a sticky note, Romans 10 11, because it was just so prominent in that season of life. And it wasn't that long ago. But I mean, Romans 10 11 was just my verse. It was my anchor verse. It was the thing that the Lord often led me to when I was anxious, when I was doubting, when I was worried, when I was excited. Um, and I think that's another thing about scripture is that the Bible applies to every season of life, right? In your grieving seasons, in your wedding planning seasons, in your giving um, new life soon to a baby season, like all the different things, college, high school, middle school, all these different things, the Bible applies to that season of life for you. And it's just so beautiful. Last verse that um, the Holy Spirit often led me to was Romans 12, 13. So again, Mark 10, Exodus 3, Romans 10, 11, and Romans 12, 13. Um, and so, yeah, it's really just how I approach the Bible. I do use sticky notes. I used to highlight in my Bible, but it became too busy, too much. So I just use like colored pens and they don't bleed through the pages as much, which is great for me. Um, but I love writing in the Bible. I love the way that I approach it and the flexibility that the Lord is weaning within me of just whether I'm reading 10 verses or one verse, what are you saying, Lord? What do I take from this? I, I see these repetitive words. What are you saying? You know, like taking note of all of that. Um, so currently this is where I am in reading the Bible and that is in Job 42. So I was in, I just finished Jeremiah 18, where it talks about the potter and the clay. And I think that was a random day of opening it up, or it might've been the Holy Spirit said, read. Yeah. The Holy Spirit said, read Jeremiah 18. I never had really sat and read Jeremiah 18 before. I've heard of the potter and the clay story, but never really read it for myself. So this was the first time it was amazing. And um, over the weekend, mom and I went to the beach and at the beach, when I was spending time with the Lord, Job 42, I randomly opened to, but it like caught my attention, which I knew the Holy Spirit was like, Hey, read this, read it. And now I'm going back, kind of backtracking into Job to understand Job 42, which is the last chapter in Job. And, um, if you know anything about Job and his story, it is a wild story. And I haven't personally sat down and known his story for myself. So I'm really backtracking without, I guess, knowing the full story of Job or reading the whole book of Job, which I may, we don't know. I'm in it right now, but I've backtracked a little bit from 42 to like 30 and just hearing the conversation between Job and God and, and, um, it's been really interesting, quite honestly. Um, last few things just to share with you when it comes to how I read the Bible. Location is everything for me. So I typically go to a quiet place. Um, if other people are home and, you know, they're being a little loud, I'll close my door if I'm in my bedroom or if I'm in my studio. And I'll sit at the table here and just sit with the Lord. There's natural light coming through, which I love. I'm a big natural light person. So that is typically where I will sit anywhere. If I'm, you know, going on a date with Jesus and I'm in my car, I'll sit either in the back of the car with the um, hatchback up or in the front. If I'm like at a park or something to that nature and 
I will just sit in quiet listening to you know, the natural surrounding and not playing any music or, you know, um, so location is everything for me. It's either in my bed at the studio, um, in my car in a quiet, quiet, quiet place. So, um, and then I had mentioned that right now I'm in Job 42, Job 30, Job basically. And right now how I'm approaching how I read the Bible is I'll write words again that stick out to me in my notebook, but then I define each and every word. So for example, I had mentioned earlier, all I'll say everything or will be, it's like concrete firm, like this will happen. And I try not to use the word within the definition and that brings a lot of creativity to to my mind of like how do I define this without using the word to define it and it's been it's pretty cool um and again I like using the words like spoke will tell go all like those are just like anchor verses for me or anchor words really and um yeah that's pretty much what I do right now I hope this has made sense and I think for me I have found my own rhythm and found this flexibility on how I approach reading God's word. And I hope for you that you can find that same way. Again, I write in my Bible. I write in a notebook. I define words that stick out to me. Um, yeah, I think it's just something that I've really loved. And when I write in my notebook and I go back to it, it's like I'm reminded of what I felt in that moment, or I'm reminded of where I was in that season. There's times where I've talked about something completely different and I'm in a new season. And it's just cool to look back on where I was at that time and the interpretation I had in that season and how my interpretation of the same verse is different in the new season. So it's very cool. This is one of the reasons I love writing in my Bible. And I'll typically change out my Bible every few years because your girl, when I write in there, it is just, it's severe, some severe stuff. But yeah, I hope this has been encouraging and makes sense and that you feel this, this power and, and passion and fire to go and read the word for yourself, to discover the rhythm that the Lord has for you and to feel the very breath of God when you open up his word, because it is the most warm, um, amazing feeling ever and um yeah i just hope this has been encouraging and i love you and that's all i've got for you i hope you enjoyed this i hope you have an amazing day i love you so much and i'll see you in the next episode bye guys Thank you guys so much for tuning into the Truth Be Told podcast. I hope it's been an encouragement to you and that you've had a moment to laugh, a moment to learn about the Lord and have this newfound fire for Christ and to pursue him and the path that he has specifically for you. I'm excited for the journey that the Lord has for you and I'm so thankful to be able to talk to you each and every episode. If you have not already gotten your copy of my book, Dear Broken Girl, you can head over to Amazon and get it there. When you get your copy, please be sure to leave a review on Amazon and share any of your thoughts with me on my Instagram account at Dear Broken Girl or Facebook account at Dear Broken Girl as well. I would love to see your thoughts on Dear Broken Girl. Um, and so Dear Broken Girl is written to teach and remind you of your worth in Jesus. So please be sure to get yourself a copy, your mama a copy, your friend, family, or even a stranger so that we can all be encouraged and be reminded and even taught who we are in the Lord. Also, I want to tell you about my Facebook ministry, Lava Lexi Howell, which is a place for me to sit down with special guests ranging from 16 to 60s or even older or even younger. And we talk about Jesus and where they are, what they're learning from the Lord, who the Lord is to them in their season of life. It's an amazing conversation that I want you to be a part of. So head over to Facebook and search for Live with Lexi Howell. Be sure to like the page, share the content, let your friends know that this is a conversation for them. 
Speaking of liking and sharing, be sure to subscribe to the Truth Be Told podcast on YouTube, podcast that you listen to. Um, be sure to follow me at Dear Broken Girl on Instagram, on Facebook, and even on Facebook, my personal page, Alexis M. Howell, where you can see all the weekly and even daily encouragement that we have for you so that you can learn more about Jesus, that you can grow in him, and that you can live for him. It's all the tools, the tips, the tricks, the study tips that you need to grow in your faith with him. So that is what I have for you guys. But before I let you go, can I pray over you? Father, I am so thankful for your son and daughter that's listening to my voice right now. I pray that you would bless them, that you would give them peace, that you would have your favor over their life, that you would use them for your glory, that every pain that they have experienced, would you use it for the purpose to which you have called them to. May each and every conversation that we have in these episodes be an encouragement to them and may they go out in their different spaces and places to proclaim your truth, to know their identity in you and to remind other people of just how good you are. I ask for your guidance over their life, over clarity, over their life, and everything else, God, that they are in need of. I pray that you would provide for them with your presence. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen.